Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. Valle de Mulini. The Valle de Mulini, or the Valley of the Mills in English, is a fascinating abandoned village in Italy that's been completely overgrown by nature. Trees growing out of ceilings, moss covering the walls, and critters living in every nook and cranny. But the Valley of the Mills is even more interesting than just a bunch of abandoned structures from the 13th century. The structures themselves are sitting inside of a deep crack in the bedrock of the earth a huge split that formed about 35,000 years ago. By geological standards, that's extremely recent. The eruption would have devastated the Mediterranean region, and it caused fissures to break open in the planet. Italians decided to take advantage of the natural stream flowing through the volcanic valley. Of course, by then it was full of greenery and life, so nobody probably thought it was volcanic. All they knew was that the water moved through the valley in ample quantities and that they could use it to their advantage. The flour mills were built and more industrial outfits soon sprang up in the valley as well. There was a sawmill, a wash house, and a whole little village of industrious locals. But disaster struck in the 1940s when the milling of flour shifted to the nearby pasta mills. The industry dried up, the valley was abandoned, and now it's being reclaimed by nature. Keep in mind that as of 2019, the local council voted to restore the Valley of the Mills, and so its old and rustic look may soon be gone. Number 9. Mada in Saleh Mada in Saleh was called Hegra by the Nabataean people who built it. The ancient desert city is hiding in the north of Saudi Arabia, carved into the shadows of giant boulders the size of city blocks. They carved their city out of the natural stones standing in the red wasteland, and it's been sitting undisturbed for about 2,000 years. It was only this decade that Saudi Arabia opened the site up for tourists, allowing them to come and see one of the greatest abandoned cities of the ancient world. If you're thinking to yourself that Hegra looks an awful lot like the site of Petra, that's because they were made by the same people. The Nabataeans had Petra as their capital a few hundred miles to the north in Jordan, while Hegra was their secondary city. It was more of a trading hub, their southerly outpost where caravans could take a rest. It was a megalithic city that played a huge role in the spice trade. In fact, the Nabataeans controlled all of the spice moving to places like Greece, Rome, Egypt, and Phoenicia. Particularly, they had a monopoly on frankincense and myrrh. And while that may not sound impressive to us today, it was important enough 2,000 years ago that the Nabataeans became filthy rich. They became so rich that the Romans annexed their entire civilization in the first century AD and pushed them into extinction. A century or two later, the Romans then abandoned Hegra and it remained mostly empty ever since. Number 8. The Gedi Ruins The Gedi Ruins can be found in Kenya, and it is a uniquely African lost city from the Middle Ages. In fact, some consider the Gedi ruins to be one of the biggest mysteries in all of Africa. The ruins can be found just off the coast of the Indian Ocean, buried deep in one of Kenya's thickest and wildest rainforests. What we do know about the city is that it most likely came into existence around the 13th century, although there is absolutely no hard evidence for that. Scientists are not only baffled about who built the town and when, but also why and when it was abandoned. All that remains these days are the ruins of coral brick houses, the stone pillars of a mosque and a palace, and yet it was once a thriving metropolis. The city was even more advanced than some places in Europe even today. There were neatly aligned streets, running water, and flushing toilets, all the luxuries of an advanced society. Archaeologists have even found artifacts from all over the world here, from Ming Chinese vases to Venetian glass made in Italy. Whoever lived in this coastal town had trade networks all over the world. And yet sometime in the past few hundred years, everybody left and never came back. Number 7. Old Kinzorsk Old Kinzorsk is an abandoned cave city located on a steep slope of a gorge in the middle of absolutely nowhere Armenia. Back in the 17th and 18th centuries, over 8,000 people lived in the subterranean city which was filled with everything that would have been in any normal Armenian city above ground. People lived in their own private homes, there were schools to educate their children, 
a bar for the villagers, a church for prayers, and even multiple cheese factories. Everybody knows you can't live underground without a consistent supply of cheese. To this day, there remain about 2,000 cave dwellings scattered across the gorge. Each of the dwellings housed anywhere between 12 and 25 people. How many people lived in each cave depended on how much money the family had. The wealthier the clan, the more money they could pay for a respected craftsman to make their cave nicer. The caves were continuously occupied right until 1958. That was when the government decided it was time for everyone to come out of their dank and dark dwellings and join the modern world. These days, there is a local businessman who runs some tours of the place. He is working to preserve it for future generations, and he just so happens to have been one of the last people born inside the cave city. Number 6. Lusonium Lusonium was a great wooden fortress at the edge of the Roman frontier to the east. The gigantic fortress was built at the Danubian Limes, which was what the Romans called the frontier at the edge of their kingdom. This was where the Danube River separated Rome from modern Hungary, Slovakia, Serbia, Bulgaria, and Romania. For the Romans, everyone beyond this line was a barbarian savage, and they also proved impossible to subjugate. When the Romans realized there was no hope of invading farther east, they stopped and built a wall. Not a long, unbreaking wall of stone and earth, but an extensive series of fortifications. Huge earthen ramparts, palisades, watchtowers, legion camps, and fortresses. This line of defense was to keep the barbarians out of Roman territory. Lusonium was one of the biggest and most impressive frontier fortresses. It was built in the 1st century AD, either under the rule of Roman Emperor Claudius or Emperor Nero, it's not exactly clear which one. The fortress was built primarily of wood and earth, but stone was added 300 years later to create an even more impressive fortress. Then, something happened shortly after, and the whole fortress was torn apart and replaced with a smaller construct of wood with an adjacent stone watchtower. About 500 to 1,000 soldiers would have guarded this fortress. They would have been charged with defending the line against the Sarmatians, who lived on the other side of the river. A small town would have sprung up around the fortress to accommodate the soldiers, and it would have been a pretty bustling area. Then, around 500 years after the fortress was built, it was abandoned. By the 5th century AD, the barbarians had started moving closer to Rome, and the fortress had to be evacuated. The Romans fled for their lives. Number 5. The Haunted Scottish Village there is an ancient traditional village in Scotland that's totally abandoned, and that's supposedly haunted by an old seer. It's one of the spookiest abandoned places in the UK, called the Old Village of Lars. As of 2021, the place was up for sale for just around $150,000. And yet even though it had an attractive price tag, locals say it also comes with a restless spirit. The Old Village is considered an ancient monument situated on the northern shore of Loch Tay in the rural region of Perthshire. One of the ruined buildings in the village is called the Laird's House, and that's where the locals say the spirit of the seer resides. According to Scottish history, she was something of a local witch who made predictions of the future. In the 17th century, she allegedly predicted the invention of steamships and trains. We don't know how much of this is true, and nobody knows if her spirit really is haunting the place. The history in the village goes back to at least 1473, but it was down to only 17 residents by 1841, according to the official UK census list. By the 20th century, the whole place was deserted. Number 4. Ajina Tepe Ajina Tepe is an ancient abandoned Buddhist cloister. A cloister is kind of like a monastery, one that's isolated from the rest of the world. It can be found these days just a few miles from the city of Bokhtar in Tajikistan. It really is in the middle of nowhere, hidden in rural Central Asia. And yet, according to the UNESCO World Heritage Center, Ajina Tepe has outstanding universal value. It's an amazing site with a rich and mysterious history, and it goes back nearly 1,500 years. Even though Tajikistan and the surrounding nations are predominantly Muslim these days, there was a major resurgence of Buddhism starting in the 7th century. 
Buddhist cloisters like Ajina Tepe sprang up like wildflowers. There was a resting Buddha statue built here, a monumental creation roughly 40 feet in length. Archaeologists have also discovered statues and carvings from Buddhist mythology and striking Buddhist murals from the 7th century. Unfortunately, the whole operation didn't seem to last very long. Within just 100 years, everyone appears to have abandoned the sacred site. The people simply left. The monk dwellings were all left to rot, and nobody really took any notice of it until the 1960s. By then, Ajina Tepe was almost completely in ruins. Number 3. Guayabo de Turialba Guayabo de Turialba is an abandoned jungle city in Costa Rica that is not very well known to the general public. There may be plenty of fantastic archaeological sites across Mexico and Guatemala, but Costa Rica barely gets any attention. There were plenty of fascinating societies living in Central America, societies just as noteworthy as the more popular Maya from the north. The physical location of Guayabo de Turialba was believed to be occupied starting around the year 1000 BC. That was right around the time Jerusalem was founded, just to put things into perspective. Then the population steadily grew, the city became larger and more advanced, and it peaked in the 9th century AD with a population of about 10,000 people. It was the main center in the region for both politics and religion, and yet the entire society was almost certainly based on farming. They farmed just enough food to keep all of their bellies full, while trying not to go to war with all of their neighbors in the north like the Aztecs and the Maya. Unfortunately, archaeologists don't actually have a name for the people who built this place. We only know that they were a highly advanced society, likely as innovative as the Maya, but not as expansive. They didn't leave behind such grand cities and impressive ruins as found in Mexico, and archaeologists don't even know what to call them. They abandoned the city at Guayabo de Turialba in the year 1400, about 100 years before the Spanish conquistador showed up. We still have no idea why they left, as it appears to have happened quickly and for no obvious reason. Number 2. Gamsutl Gamsutl is one of the oldest settlements in the entire region of Mount Gamsutlmir in Russia. The town itself is situated high up at the mountain's peak, 4,600 feet above sea level. It's also known as the Machu Picchu of Russia. While the village may be ancient, it's currently abandoned and in ruins. It's also so far out of the way that getting to this place is like trying to climb to the roof of the world. In fact, Gamsutl actually translates in the local ethnic language to at the foot of the Khan's fortress. For this reason, most historians believe it was a local Khan who wanted to build the greatest fortification anyone had ever seen, and so he ordered a great castle, fortress, and city to be built at the peak of the mountain. Here's where things get a little mysterious. Nobody actually knows how old the city is. Some estimates say 2,000 years, and some say 5,000 years. All we know is what the archaeological evidence tells us, which honestly isn't much. At its peak, Gamsutl only had about 300 houses, meaning maybe a thousand citizens or less. However, they lasted all the way into the 20th century, when the village was still a bustling place filled with life and energy. There were shops, a post office, and even a hospital to treat the sick. The people who lived there were completely isolated. The only way to reach the mountain village is by driving to a nearby town called Chok, then hiking over two hours into the foothills using ancient pathways. From there, you still have to climb to the top of the mountain. Sadly though, 2015 saw the death of the very last remaining resident, and now there is nobody living in this ancient place, and all 70 of the remaining homes are slowly crumbling. Number 1. Carlaverock Castle Carlaverock Castle stood for only 50 years before it was forsaken. The castle, located in Scotland near Dumfries, was home to the Maxwell family in the 13th century. The family was so rich that 50 years after they built the original castle, they had a new one built just a few yards away and moved into that. They completely abandoned the first one, leaving it to rot in the year 1270. Fun fact, it is the only castle in the shape of a triangle in all of Britain. Up until now, Scottish historians had simply assumed the family wanted an upgrade to reflect their wealth. 
But according to Stefan Sagrat with the Historic Environment Scotland, it may have actually had something to do with extreme weather events. The original Carlaverock Castle may have experienced a prolonged period of flooding, which made life living in the castle utterly miserable. But rather than building a new home many miles away, the Maxwell family simply had a new castle built just far enough away from the flooding for it not to be affected. The new castle remains almost completely preserved to this day and is considered one of the best pieces of Scottish medieval architecture. On the other hand, the original Carlaverock Castle is very rapidly falling apart. Thanks for watching! Would you ever consider living in an old abandoned castle or fortress? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. See you soon! Bye!